I don't know how to. It's crazy because I don't know how to do this thing. I might need to give me a straw. Mm mm. I ain't doing it. No, ma'am. What's good, bro? Is my thing on? Yeah, it's on. Yeah. That's the bell. Oh, no. The straw made it come up. Why do that? Why they do that? Uh uh, I'm not drinking this like that. I need a straw. I don't know why it fizzed up. <sighs> you gonna give me that cup? A glass, glass, a glass cup up there. Well, that's a good thing. Oh, I'm about to break down the, um,. The squid gang. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. <laughs> hey, you ain't even rinse it off for me. What's that? <laughs> I bought some more, but they like probably nothing but about not even six in that damn box. Yeah, I'm trying to get this, this fizz down. How y'all feeling out there on this um, good old Saturday? I hope everybody watched Squid, because I'm going to break it down, and I'm going to get up out of here. Mm -hmm. Oh, the invite for um, October 30 is a, uh, another Bible uh, decoding session. I just made it as an event so it can remind everybody it's next Sunday. Yep. Where is my charging? Oh. Mm. I don't even think I got the symbolism of the shape. Okay. <laughs> Did I do it? Uh, I didn't do it. Okay. Well, we're going to break it down anyway. I'm about to get ready to start. Oh, he is in the bed. That's what's up. All right, I guess we're just going to get started in. Well, if you watched um, The Squid Game, which everybody's been talking about lately, it was pretty. It was a pretty good season. I say I enjoyed myself watching it. Um, it had some powerful symbolisms in it, uh, messages behind it. So, I'm just going to um, break it down for the, what I gained from my perspective of seeing it. And we just going to ride it out. We're just going to go through each um, episode. And the symbolism of the numbers is also connected to this, too. 
which I was saying, um, which we um, probably all know about num numerology. I think, you know what? I'm glad I invited you because I'm like, damn, hold up. I got to, because we can't be remem remembering everybody's name, you know, just alphabet <laughs> when I be trying to tag. I had a list that way I can go by that, but, and it, Facebook don't, they only put up so many names. So I be trying to remember what names start with and stuff like that. Just putting a letter in. And I seen your name. I said, oh, yeah. Let me go and add her. Okay. I mean, invite her because I know you be saying you be missing them. And Facebook don't. They be adding up sometime with the notifications. But I'm going to get into the squid game. Um, The first thing I want to break down first is the squid symbolism. Since we are talking about the squid game, so it's only right to break down the symbolism of the word squid. And if you um, research it, um, it'll probably pop up as a spiritual animal and other things. But um, it basically is a highly intelligent and masters of disguise. Okay, and it has powerful personalities. That can be checked and balanced by themselves. They achieve more or regenerate in this or regeneration. Um, what's significant about the squid is it has three heartbeats and nine brains, and the blood is actually blue. Now, if you watch, you know, a few of my videos, I've talked about the number three being the symbolism of the Christ energy and dealing with uh, the Trinity. Right, they do. They do, sis. They do what they want to do. <laughs> and it has nine brains, which um, nine is a symbolism also of um, dealing with the divine energy, um, dealing with new beginnings. Uh, what's going on, sis? Break it down, squid. It means new beginnings, um, completion. It's the highest number in numerology. Um, it also, the squid also has blue blood. And looking at it from, um, looking at it from you know, an energy perspective, dealing with the all, we know that the blue symbolizes your throat chakra. Um, it deals with your throat chakra. The frequencies that we form in these this reality and this experience in our reflections, uh, they they are done through frequency. So when you speak, you are forming your reality. So that's the symbolism behind squid, a highly intelligent but also master of the sky. And in our journey, we have to be highly intelligent, which is the consciousness. And you have to be a master of disguise. Meaning you got to know how to play in your journey. When it's um, dealing with your lessons, dealing with gaining the knowledge, dealing with making the next step. And the squid game also, symbol, um, not symbolized, but it's similar to the uh, the chess game. Okay? So when you play chess, you can't just move or jump out there. You have to play with your consciousness. You have to be highly intelligent. So you can be a master of your disguises to move in a certain way to gain elevation. Understanding. Knowledge experiences, all of those deal with your master of disguises on how you're going to move to gain elevation. Okay. Now the episode on squid, on squid game, the first episode is red light, green light. And I know as a kid, we all, and I know as a kid for me, and I'm pretty sure for y'all, y'all remember the game red light, green light. Children still play it today. 
That is dealing with your foundation because of the red light. You have to stop. You have to be in isolation. You have to observe your surroundings. Okay? You got to be focused on what way you're going to move. Because when that light turns green, which is your elevation coming around, where you move your frequency out to create your formation, which is your next step. That becomes your reality, which is a cause to your, which is the cause and cause and the effect. Okay, so when they plan these games, a lot of people, and this is still on the chessboard as well, because there's a lot of puns on the chessboard. Okay, and the ones that are the puns in the front are the ones that's most likely taken out first. Which can be a self-sacrifice for the for the ones that's last to come first. Okay, and a lot of them died at the beginning of the red light, green light. A lot of them wasn't in their foundation. Um, foundation also is symbolizing your 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 stability, your balance, your roots. Okay, a lot of them wasn't stable in their foundation when it was at red and they had to stop. I mean, you can also look at it as a fact that when, you know, you got so much going on in your mind and you can't just sit still to just think in peace. You're constantly, your mind is constantly on a move. Okay. Which is your energy is constantly on a move and it's not in a balanced frequency where it can be, where it can be stable to have um, to have foundation, to have clarity. Okay, so you can know which way you're going to move when the elevation come around. So, also dealing with the red, you release a lot in your foundation. You got to come out of your comfort zone. Okay? You got to come out of your comfort zone to be able to release things that no longer serves you any purpose or that's in your way, that's harboring, I mean, um, that's stopping you from moving forward when the light turns green. Whether it be fear, remember the number four, the guy that was four, five, six, he was scared at one point. When the red, the, when it turned red, he was still, and when it turned green, he couldn't move. He was, he was in fear, and he was also at a crossroads of a, somebody holding on to them, holding on to him, and they want to help. But see, at this point in our journey, it's all right to help people, but when somebody is at a point where you can't help them, you got to help yourself to move forward. That's a self sacrifice you have to take. Okay. So, once the other guy, I think it was number 118, was telling him, you got to go, you got to move. Now, if you add up 118, we got 2, 1 and 1 is 2, plus the 8, which is 10. That's completion. A spiritual guide of himself telling him, you need to go on, you need to move. Okay? Completion is taking place. Your elevation is right there knocking at the door. Don't allow yourself to be in anyone's demise, but to keep moving forward. Okay? So he eventually kept, he eventually let, pulled his leg away from the guy and he moved forward. That's letting go, releasing to gain elevation at the, at the green, at the, um, at the finish line. So. It's at one point. I can't remember. I think this is in. I think this is at the beginning. When the little boy tells him to stop. 
and he says, pick the prize. Oh, no, this is when he was trying to, um, this is at the beginning of the episode when he was down and out in his foundation. He didn't know what his next move was going to be, right? And he was, he drank a lot. He didn't have money. His mama was giving him money. And this is a sign that came to him when he was playing the video game. He used the money, some of the money that his mother gave him to buy his daughter a gift and take her out to eat, right? So while he's playing at this video game, he's constantly losing. Instead of just taking a minute and sit back and think, you know, and connect with self and do what's right, okay? But he, of course, his life was at chaos with self, so he continued to keep playing the game. And then this little boy, which is also a symbolizing, symbolism of his inner child, okay, telling him to stop. Really stop and think before you make your move, okay? And he said, when you stop and you think and you know what prize you want, you want, you can pick it. You can get it, okay? Meaning you have to stop and realize what you want to do. Take a breather sometimes. Sit back and just analyze self, Okay? So you can win your prize. So the little boy told him, you know, just stop and pick the prize he want first, okay? Which I was just saying, you know, you, you have to stop and you have to focus on your prize. And or your manifestations as well. It's what you want, okay? When I say, you know, when I've said before, you know, you got to be careful what you put out. Even on social media, right? Well, that's the same thing when you're manifesting. You got to be careful what energy you put out because that's what you're going to attract back. All right? Becomes your own karmatic loop. All right? So you got to be careful. You got to know what you want and you got to stand in it. You got to do what's right for you regardless of what anybody else think. Hey, sis. Okay? And like I said before, with me, I, I had a hard time saying no to people. But I had to learn it's all right to say no. Okay? He come across the dude at the uh, subway station. Ask him, do we want to play a game? Which is also self, a reflection of self. Okay? Prepping you for a new game. Alright? Something that's going to bring even more greatness to you. But you got to face your reflections and you got to face your foundation, your roots of it all. Okay? To be able to move forward. To be able to win your prize. Alright? And that's being one with everything, including yourself. With no judgment, nothing. To have that new life. To, to make that new change. Alright? So, as he was playing the game with the dude, you know, trying to hit the square to make it turn over, he kept losing, he kept losing. And see, sometimes that happens to a lot of us. We just keep losing because we don't take a minute and just sit back and focus. We try to do everything in a, in a rush, in a hurry. Instead of just taking our divine time. Okay? You can't rush greatness. At all. When I get orders, and if I, you know, at a certain point during the ordering process, and I got to step back, I, I take that step back. Because I know as long as I'm frustrated, or as long as my mind is just going here and there and everywhere, or my energy just off, I'm not going to be able to create the, create the greatness I know that I have. And I always want to give people 
the greatness of me. I'm not going to have slack on anything that I do. Some people will say that's a professionist. Hell, we, that's your greatness. Okay, so when he couldn't win that game at first, he finally took a time, a moment to himself, breathe in, kiss the blue square, which is dealing with your throat chakra, okay, which is dealing with what you're going to speak out into existence to form into your reality, okay, creation itself. Is done through frequency. So he kissed the blue square. And when he kissed it. He turned it. He hit it and he turned the red square over. Which beat the man. Which was beating a symbolism of his higher self. Showing I got this. I'm connected. You know. At that moment he was connected to his higher self. Because higher self kept winning. But he had to get on that frequency. To do the same thing that the God in him or the higher frequency or your higher self can do. That's meaning you're being one with it. You're not against it. So, he, that's, you know, after all of this is taking place, his little girl is moving to the U.S. So, that's when he decides to join the game, okay? And so let's just let the games begin. Sometimes we have to lose something to win. All right? So him getting ready to lose his daughter because they was moving to the United States was pushing him to, to win, to change. So he can be in connection with his daughter. All right? Sometimes you got to lose the win. So when they picked them up, the password was red light, green light. Release and go. You remember them little, them little toy, uh, the little toy uh, cars, which you got to wind up, or you got to pull it back, and then let it go. Release and go. In your foundation, you have to release to move forward. All right. When he wake up, he wake up in the game. His number is four, five, six, which equals up with all those numbers added, which is six. All right. Which is symbolism of a new beginning as well, balance, um, connection, you're highly in tune with your consciousness. Six is also a master number as well because of the 33. So, nurturing as well. Peace. Okay. So, his number is four, five, six, which is symbolizing the number six. And as we get on down in these episodes, you get to see him. Okay. And you get to see how nurturing he is. How at peace he is about, you know, whatever happens, happens. But, you know... He really wanted to win, you know, but he wasn't going to force it. This was his last chance at life, he felt like, okay, because everything that he really mostly importantly loved, such as his mother and his daughter, he was losing. So he didn't have really nothing to lose at this point. All right. And the old man that plays the game, his number is number one. The 
old man will be the first of the reflection. And number four, five, six will be the last. As they were said before, those who are last will become first. And those who are first will become last. All right. So we are in a part of the journey where those who were last are starting to become first. And when I mean by that, I mean the ones who are awakened to their consciousness, okay? That have awakened to their consciousness, that don't think like those who are, you know, connected to the religion, who are Christians. We don't think like that anymore. They call us the crazy ones. They say we are evil. Um, they say we are lost. So they put you as last, as the black sheep. But the black sheep always come first, which is the goat. All right. Then we have the number uh, 101. It's a character that's 101 in there. And I think at the beginning, this one does transition at the first game. 101 with the two is a symbolism of duality. A parallel universe, parallel path or journey. Um, reflection, twin flames, as they would say. Um, the divine energy, masculine and feminine. All right. Yin and yang. All right. Then they have the girl that's one of the, um, one of the uh, top actors, you know, main actors. Her number is 67, which adds up to nine. That means the divine energy all day long. Spiritual guide is one. Okay. All right. Now, the, the, the three symbols for the card invite, which was the square, the, tr uh, the triangle, and the circle. As we know, the square deals with the square root, which is your foundation. All right. The triangle deals with your trinity, which is your Christ energy. All right. And also where your wisdom and your knowledge is at, your information. And the circle deals with, I say the circle of life, uh, your 360. Okay, I was just talking to one of my sisters today and we was talking about the 360. Every 360 days you start a new chapter. All right. A new elevation. Some people get still, some people get stuck in those chapters. But most likely you're supposed to end a chapter and begin a new chapter every year. Even if it's just something minor, that's a change in you. That would bring out the greatest still in you. Even if it's like changing jobs, relocating, getting rid of people, okay? Bringing more balance and peace in your, in your, um, within yourself. Okay? Which, um, the circle, the circle, the dudes that wear the circle, the, the people that wore the circle on their, on their mask, they deal with the dead bodies. Once again, you know, the ending of something, but the beginning as well. Now, all the people that's been, that's been picked, they all got debt in their experience. See, on here, they talk about the debt. 
they talk about the debt dealing with money, which is symbolism of abundancy, okay, or stability. Um, some have lost their family, so they need some healing. There's a debt within your, within your experience, within yourself. A debt is anything that's got a hold on you, stopping you from moving forward. Come on, baby. What you want? What? What? She right here talking about getting something, Shannon. Out the refrigerator. Go tell daddy to come and get it for you. I don't know what you... Oh, my bad, y'all. But we all have some debt or have had debt in our journeys, which is a a lock, a blockage from help um, stopping you from moving forward, okay? Which is also the, the red light. Because everything that's created in your foundation, whether it's good or... A demise of things. I don't want to say bad, but a demise of things, you know, things that we create of create as illusions in our journey, you know, that will stop us from moving forward. Okay. And debts can also be attachments as well. All right. The gold piggy bank is a symbolism of your crown, okay, your manifestations, your reality, your new, your new beginning, okay, your prize, your reward of self, all right, and it takes a lot of sacrifices to get it. All right? It takes a lot of sacrifices to get it. Four, five, six was the only one that smiled on his picture, y'all. When they had to take a picture. He was the only one that smiled. <laughs> And to me, I'm like, yo, regardless what you go through, you got to smile through this shit. I ain't saying you got to put on a fake smile, but that means you got to have no worries to get your prize. You got to know that, oh, I got something better. Or you got to know that I got something different. You know, I got something waiting on me. And it all has to deal with change. It all has to deal with me being positive and not having no worries, not stressing. Or allowing me to suppress things that take place that have take place in my my experience. Which is what which will uh trigger depression. Depressed, you're not going anywhere. All right. He was the only one smile. He was the only one that smiled, and also he connected to his inner child. Because that inner child, that pure innocence, that pure energy, okay, has no worries, knows the truth. He was excited about the games. We well, excited about the first game. All right. Now, when they go, they go through these steps and stuff to get to the next game. I seen this is the the maze, the maze, a maze, like in the Matrix, you know, to get to your next, your next chapter, your next game. Your next elevation. Uh, 
right? Also, the old man is also a symbolism of the inner child, too. Because he didn't have no worries. The inner child of all of them. But we got some more about little man, too, at the end. But he definitely went through each bull with no worries. And he had a lot of wisdom to give them, to help them to get to the next level. Which is the same thing that takes place when you connect to yourself. And you have to listen to yourself to get to the next level. Because self is not going to stir you wrong. All right. His, um, he link up with an old childhood that's in there. He realized he in there. His number is 218, which is also number two added up. All those numbers. Peace, sis. Yes, always happy. All right. Which his number 218 number adds up to be number two. Um, which I was saying earlier is duality. Two uh, parallel universes, two parallel paths, the yin and the yang. All right. Divine feminine and divine masculine energy. The twin flames, as they would say. And everything looks so real in this game. As we say, like this matrix. Everything looks so real. It's a projection of what we've created. All right? All right. And most of these people who are eliminated in this game, they are eliminated because of their own fear. Once they realize that people were actually being taken out or transitioning, you know, which is representing an a ending and a beginning, they freaked out. A lot of us would have. All right. But when you're in fear and you're freaked out like that, you can't think consciously. I mean, consciously, consciously. You only make decisions based off of fear. You can't make the logical or a highly intelligent choice when you're in fear. You can't listen to self. You listen to everybody else and you're being attached to their energy. All right? Which is distracting your energy, which is causing you to be in fear. Because they're in fear. All right? Now, the prize also represents self-abundance, all right? Now, at the first game, everybody won. It was, it was number... It was uh, uh, number four, five, six who wanted to stop. Once he, he was one of those people that was in fear. Pieces that was in fear of seeing of those other reflections being, you know, sacrificed and taken out. All right. He wanted to stop the game. And the only way they would stop is majority voted. And majority did vote. So they stopped the game right there at the first game, um, after the first day. I mean, the first game. Sorry, y'all. 
once they went back home, they went back to complete hell. They was back in debt with themselves. They was back in the foundation of themselves. The roots of themselves. Still in debt. Because they didn't get the understanding of what was taking place to get the prize of your self-abundancy. I know we don't like to sacrifice. And it's hard to sacrifice. And it's hard to see people being sacrificed. You know? But that's the object of the game. And that's the object of, of your journey. So you can keep it moving. And you can get ahead with self. Alright? You become one with self. You become powerful and limitless with self. You become all things, including abundancy with self. But since they were still in fear, and he was one of the main characters that was still in fear, the first boy scared the shit out of him, which is nice, most likely a lot of us too. First time we started our self journey, a lot of shit scared us. It scared some people, they went back to church. What well, was too hard? For a lot of people. They didn't want to put they didn't want to put in the work. They wasn't down for the sacrifice. Alright? So they went back to hell. And episode two is called Hell. All right. But during this time that they was back in hell, back in self debt debt, after the end of the the, first, the game after the first stage, a lot of the main characters connected with their reflection. Four fifty six connecting with number one. All right. Okay. Just so they can become balanced with oneself and go back into the game. And another thing about, you know, a lot of people quit on the first step. I mean, the first stage. A lot of people will take themselves out. A lot of people will scare themselves so bad or it don't, it are not even ready. And will transition in the blink of an eye. All right. Even those that we say are innocent bystanders. They could be innocent to anybody else's situation or anyone else's experience. But trust me, they didn't place themselves there for no reason. All right? Self-sacrifice is hard. But they all began, began to become one with selves of their reflections, the ones that they, they met outside of the game. Now, the dude that's got the snake to his mouth. Now, y'all know I was jumping for joy when I seen this shit. Because just a what, a, a month of, girl, no, get down. Get down for you fall. Shannon. Right here with the stool on the um, refrigerator. I don't want the floor to, to slide with that. I mean, that thing to slide on that floor. But um, he had a snake that came up to his mouth. Now, y'all know I was jumping up for joy for this part because just about, what, about a month and a month ago? It might be a little bit more, more than a month. But I was talking about how the kundalini energy rises up to our throat, which is the serpent tongue. <laughs> and we be talking about, you know, we've talked about how 
the throat chakra is one of the most powerful portals of self because that's what actually projects your formality, your reality, what you speak into existence. Your creations come through your mouth. So you got to be careful how you speak. Which is a powerful symbolism. So I was jumping for joy when I seen that. I was like, look at this shit. And then and he was the main one in the in the uh in the series that used that throat frequently. He spoke his damn mind, he said what he wanted to say. He did what the hell he wanted to do. And he knew how to persuade people by manipulating them to get ahead. Which a lot of people know how to use the power of the tongue to persuade you to move, you know, uh, to react a certain way or to do a certain thing just so they can get ahead. That's those that cheat. They're not honest. And that shit can only last for so long. So they end up going back to the game. Which is the ending of episode two. So, number three is, episode three is dealing with the umbrella. And it's called Umbrella Man. That's what it's called. Yeah. I mean, the man with the umbrella. I'm sorry. All right. So, the umbrella is a symbolism of, you know, a corporation. A corporation of people. Because even in your journey, even though you are walking on your own, and you are creating your own cause and effects of things, all right, you still need people in your journey to, um, to elevate or to get ahead, all right? So with this game right here, under under this episode, they was talking about how they got to create a team so they can have each other back through this journey of this game, right? Because they know that they can't win it on their own. No one can. We all need somebody that we can talk to, we can chill with. Okay. Whatever you know you want to do, you you we all need somebody. Because even though you can talk to yourself all day long and you can repeat the same thing, sometimes it's more better and it's even stronger when you release it out when you're speaking to someone else, which is venting. Or you know, you're having a conversation. Which is you vibing. All right? Having a good time. Because through a vent become through the vent in any household, you get cool air or hot air. All right? And then you can also put it in a room temperature when it's just right, just cozy. Which is that balance. All right. So they formed a team. And the girl that's 212, she is just so full of. She doesn't have any self certain with herself, uh, she doesn't have any self worth. She's very vulnerable, okay? Desperate for attention, as we would say, but a connection. No matter if it's coming from, I mean, dealing with the men, it don't matter what man it is. But she didn't really want any connection dealing with any women. She felt like she was better than the women that was there. 
So she kind of kind of used her divine feminine energy to try to manipulate the men so she can get ahead. That's another cheat in the game. Me, personally, I used to be one of those women. <laughs> I would play on these dudes out here. Get whatever I can out of them. Alright? And when I'm done with them, I throw them to the side. And I move on along. Cheating to get ahead in life. Feeling like I got to use somebody. Okay? which was my preference of men to get where I needed to go in life, to have what I wanted to have in life. Yeah. Men do it too. Okay. I have a lot of men out here nowadays that just sleep with different women and hey, whatever you want to do, that's you. But I guarantee you can't win self with that behavior. All right, because that means you're constantly at a on the go. You're trying to fill a void. All right, a void that you've already had all along within yourself, but you think it's dealing with another reflection, and not even understanding that that same reflection that you're using is a reflection of yourself that you're using. All right. So she tried. She, she, she did whatever she needed to do when it came to you know trying to get to be on the team with the men. Okay. I mean, you can be vulnerable, but you ain't got to be desperate. You ain't got to be thirsty to get ahead. You ain't just cheating the game. You cheating yourself. For gaining the valuable lessons. And that's that's a part of that experience at the time. Alright, so. <clears throat> so we talked about the umbrella being in the, like, a symbolism of the corporation. Which is them gaining they ga gaining their team. So they go into this game. You know, and the game is called. Uh, what is the name of the game? Hold up. It's a uh, it's a shape game dealing with cookie. I can't even remember what the name they call. I can't even remember. But everybody on the team that was with number four, five, six picked the um picked the shape. And the shape was the the triangle, the star, the umbrella, and the circle. All right. All right. So they all each had a shape. Hey, sis. It's all good. Because I'm just now on chapter three. But I'm trying to move it up a little faster. So we won't be here that long. I ain't got that much longer, though. I did short notes after this, but. Um, Y'all know how I am. I, I catch every little damn detail. I can't help it. <laughs> but everybody, um, and everybody picked a shape that deals with their childhood. You know, that was something that happens in their foundation that, you know, um, that connected to them. That's why they picked that shape. All right. So... They all doing everything, you know, they doing good. They getting out of there, you know, doing their shapes. Um, I think the star, he tried to pick the easiest one. With, not the um the star. 218 picked the triangle, which he felt like was the easiest to pick. Alright? And the girl picked the star. Um four, five, six picked the umbrella, and the old man picked the star. Alright. So the two the girl and number 218 thought that they was getting the easiest um the easiest piece of pieces of the game. Thanks, sis. 
the easiest pieces of the game, right? That they feel like they could not lose. You know, okay? They couldn't lose with these pieces, these shapes. Which they didn't, okay? So, four, five, six is trying, his, you know, he, he was doing it the way everybody was doing it at first, you know? To try to get his, his shape out without it breaking. Because if it would have broke, he would have been eliminated. He would have been sacrificed. Okay? So, he end up start licking it. Why not? It's a cookie. Alright? So, he licking and he licking it to soften up the cookie. So, he can get this piece out with no problem. And while he's doing this, everybody else started doing the same thing he was doing, including the old man. All right? Meaning he didn't have to follow what everybody else was doing. He started doing what he felt like was right for him and what was going to get him. Because, see, his high consciousness was like, yo, the green light went off. All right? Like, yo, ding, 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 ding. You got to do this. Do this. Soften up this. Okay? Soften up a part of this experience so you can move forward. You can get this shade out with no grease, no, no, um, with a breeze. Yes, and everybody followed what he was doing, sis. <laughs> and the ones who did follow what he was doing were saved. They end up getting a star, they shape out with no problem. Including the old man, like I said. And when they got finished done with that game, the old man told him he wouldn't have had won if he wouldn't have seen, well, he wouldn't have passed that, uh, finished the game if he didn't start doing what he was doing, which was licking the cookie. All right. So everybody ended up passing. The girl and the man that's number 218 didn't think they was going to make it out of there. They thought they was going, they thought they was fucked. They thought they was going to be sacrificed. And see, even though they wasn't doing what the other cheaters was doing, like the dude with the snake, with the serpent tongue, okay, intimidating people with his frequency, the girl that's, uh, what was her number? Two, I can't even remember her damn number. 203, something like that. I mean, 201, something like that. I mean, 212, because her number is 5, that's right. She out there being vulnerable and manipulating people, you know, and ma manipulating the men to try to get ahead. So they cheating with the the, uh, the the worst way you could cheat because you're using your energy to cheat like that. But see, they thought that they was being funny, number 218, and the girl, number 67, they thought they was being smart, Okay. And sometimes you trying to be smart ain't even your right move. Because you trying to play somebody else. Yeah, the chick with the lighter, she was very vulnerable. Very manipulating to the masculine energy. And definitely did not like the feminine energy at all. But they came through them doors. And they were shocked that they had passed that stage. At this time, they get to the next game. And I think this one is Tug of War. Hold up. Oh, no, 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 no. I think that's Tug of War, y'all. Okay. I can't find a night, but anyway. Yeah, this is Tug of War. But, um, I don't know the name of it. But anyway, during this time, after this game, chaos erupts. You know, another sacrifice taking place because those who in fear have figured out if they cause fear or havoc or chaos 
amongst those who are playing the game at a more conscious level, you know, and being very um, compassionate to others, you know, being honest with themselves and others and not trying to cheat the game, they feel like they could cause some chaos, which is bringing on fear to eliminate them so they can get ahead. All right. So during this time, after the game, the second game, at night when the lights was cut, they was in there sacrificing. It was the fear of sacrificing those who, of the fear. All right. Thanks, sis. <laughs> Thank you. It was fear against the fear. All right. And even those who, and the ones who were playing this game and playing you know, being a part of self-journey in a higher consciousness, they was not a threat, all right? And even if they was a threat, they came out of that because they stick together, you know? They didn't leave no one behind. They, prote they protected each other. All right? So they was able to overcome that chaos that took place. And it really took that the old man, which is the one that was first, to, to shout out crying. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that too at the end. All right? Because this energy is something serious. All right? So... They end up going to tug of war. They got to get on tip two. It's ten to each um, to each team. And at this time, two twelve, which is the the girl that's very manipulating to the masculine energy, trying to do anything to you know stay in the game. All right. She becomes a part of four five six number. All right. He be, she becomes the. A team member, a team member of four, five, six in them. And at this time, she's still trying to act like she's better than the women. All right, but not even understanding that this divine feminine energy over there is so far powerful than where she is at in her journey. And they see right through her shit. So they're able to coexist. You know, so they can go through this 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 part of the experience, which is this game, this part of the um game, and pass, so they can all get to their next elevation. Sometimes we just got to let people be them. Just take what you can, what you what you supposed to gain from it, and just keep it moving. All right. Because sooner or later, that person, that same person that try to play on your consciousness is definitely going to need you in the long run. So sometimes you just got to let people hang themselves. Yeah, she inserted herself on the team, honey. Definitely did that. Just jumped right in that motherfucker. And, that, and to me, them type of people that just jump in your life, you got to pay attention to them. <laughs> Make sure they ain't got a motive, a hidden agenda. Trying so hard. Yeah, you, you yeah. You got to pay attention to those types of so energy. So, you know, they get up there. They all on the team together. And... As they was going up, four, five, six team was going up to play tug of war. The old man was trying to give them some keys on how to play this shit. You good, sis? And he was trying to give them some keys on how to play this tug of war game. Because in our journey, is nothing but a tug of war. <laughs> okay everything is a tug of war in your journey 
All right? So he was telling them the aspects and the keys, the knowledge, the wisdom, whatever you want to say. How to deal with this tug of war and how to, how to win. All right? He was telling them how they had to lean back. Gain some balance in your body, which is their position or where they're at. All right? Gain the balance. Hold on to the rope real tight. Okay? And then they had some on one side and some on the other. All right? Which is also bringing balance in your journey. With other reflections. All right. No matter what it is. That's a tug of war in your journey. Some people you just got to be balanced with them at the moment to get ahead. Work together as a union. As a unity. To move forward. Gain the lesson. To get the elevation. At first, they didn't want to hear it. But four, five, six was like, hell nah. I need to see what old, let, let's hear what the old man got to say. Because remember, the old man is a symbolism of the inner child. That's the wisdom. All right? The source of the game. All right? So they listen because four, five, six say, hold up, let, let's hear what he got to say. So they end up listening to him. They go out there and they do it just what number one has said, which is also the reflection of your oneness, your neo. You are the one self. All right. They go out there and do what self told them to do. And just when they thought they had it, they, they, they was like, yes, we got it. You know? And sometimes, sometimes when we be like, yeah, we got it, we sometimes be a little off balance when we say we got it. You know, we, we tend to tap into their ego a little bit. We should would have looked at a person for a split second and shame on you. All right? But you still have to stay balanced. Regardless if you see the elevation coming, you still can't look down upon nobody. All right? Yes. So it took them. They was, they was, they was about the, they was, the other, the other side was like, shit, we finna get them now. Self-doubt. And then 218 said, hold up, hold up. Let's do this. Let's do this. Yourself again. Telling you, okay, you don't did this. Okay, now you got to do this. Just so you can gain the strength and your, your power back to hold this rope so you can be able to control the tug of the war. All right. So we tell them, you know, let's let's move forward a little bit. Let's go up a little bit. Let them think that they got it. And then just when you think you got it, just like when you thought you got it, you begin to pull that tug back. All right? And get control of the tug of the war. All right? And they was able to, to win the tug of war. Which also takes another sacrifice. Right, sis? Get your foundation right. Right? To, to get ahead and to get to your greatness, which is in multiple levels because it's endless, you're going to have to take multiple sacrifices. 
whether it's somebody in your family, somebody that's a friend or anything in any aspect or perspective of your journey. All right. You're going to have to be willing to take the sacrifice and accept the sacrifices. All right. So, episode five. They team win. Now, the, the dude that's number 101, that's the snake with the serpent. You know, the serpent, the, the snake coming up to his mouth. The serpent tongue, okay? His team is actually the stronger. They the strongest in the game. All right, they are the strongest in the game. But say, but look, the strongest ones, just by strength, can be the weakest ones. All right, and that's by power. All right, so they the strongest in the game. All right, they can manipulate. They controlling the situation, the bully, which is the matrix, the governed mind. Your energy trying to gain one is off balance, which is the ego. Okay. That ego is a strong mother something. When your energy trying to gain one is it strong as hell. All right. And we think, and a lot of people think, just because you're strong, you're not scared. <laughs> Even the strongest people that's not that, that think they're not scared do the craziest shit to to keep up with the image uh, the image of being strong. Okay, and he's still trying to portray to that girl like, yeah, I got this. Even though now she sees right through him. She see what type of energy he is. But she's still trying to cheat the game. Now yeah, I'm going to fall back for a minute. But when my pop, that perfect opportunity presents itself. Hmm. Yes. We gonna face each other. And we either gonna have balance or we either about to we either both about to transition in this situation. And that doesn't have to be a physical thing. That could be spiritual. Whether we walk away from each other and still have that balance. And accept the change among both of us? Shit. But long as we both trying to go at each other and we both trying to win with this fucking off-balance ass ego or trying to cheat the game, nobody's going to fucking win. No one is going to win that way. So in this episode five is on um, five is called a fair world. And the game that they're playing, I think it's fair game, which is a game played in equality, meaning, you know, becoming one with self and your reflections, you know, being equal to all being one, giving life, which is yourself a second chance. All right. Playing the game in your heart. Being honest to yourself. Being honest to others. All right.
Now, that's a cop. I'm going to speak about him for a second. He is in the game. Well, he's not in the game, but he snuck in the game by speaking through, you know, speaking to four, number 456, which is the main character of Squid Game. And he's really trying to find his brother. All right. And he knew that he was in the Squid Game. All right. Squid Game is a high intelligence game of self. Okay. It's outside of the Matrix. All right. That means to play this game, you have to be in your higher consciousness to win. And sometimes people are desperate to win. But still end up failing because they look at shit on a physical level instead of looking at it dealing with self. Which will become, they will become a casualty or self-sacrifice. Or an example on what not to do so others can know how to move. But the cop, you know, he looking for his brother, you know, and he finding out all kind of, you know, information that's taking place is dealing with the disappearance of his brother. All right. So he's actually in his foundation and he's trying to find his brother. He's trying to reconnect with his brother. Okay, and he knew that he was there at the squid game at one point of time. So he snuck in to try to find information. So you see him, you know, playing the game to gain truth about his brother or about self. Right? So I just want to speak about him. And his number in the room he stayed in, the number he stayed in on his room uh, was, what was his number? I just seen it. I want to say 28. His room number was 28, which is also 10, which is also symbolizing a new beginning, completion. You know, oneness. All right. Divine energy, wisdom, truth, and light. Now, number six, I was just about to skip it. Number six is the game of reflection, is elimination with the marbles. Now, have y'all ever heard of the saying is you ain't got all your marbles? It was 29. Okay, well, 29 is 11. It's 2. So that's dealing with the yin and the yang. Uh, divine divine energy and feminine energy. Um, duality, like I was saying earlier. So, yeah. And that's still dealing with his truth because he's trying to find the balance in his foundation. By looking for his brother, you know, the connection. Okay. But yeah, have y'all ever heard of the saying, uh, do you got all your marbles? Because <laughs> it's just kind of ionic. I mean, you know, kind of funny that they're playing the marble game and they're dealing with and they're playing against their reflections. The ones that they partner up with was their reflection. All right. The reflection of the now. In a present time, in a present part of their journey. All right. So the old man is playing with number four, five, six. And four, five, six, he losing like a mug. He losing. All right. 
Yes, it's, it's dealing with your mental. And he losing to number one. You know, one is the beginning of all. It's hard to beat the beginning. <laughs> and you really can't beat the beginning. All right? You really cannot. You can't beat the beginning of things. You got to learn the lesson only to just move forward. All right. So he losing to the old man. Which is only to uh Yeah, he going crazy losing the number one. Like a mother. <laughs> He about to lose this damn mind, okay? <laughs> he was about to lose his damn mind to the point like, hurry up, old man. <laughs> Pick a number. What did you bid? You know? He was going fucking crazy, but it was all to teach him a valuable lesson, okay? <laughs> At the end of it. Because <laughs> By still giving him his last marble, he was saying they was both because in um eventually number one just let him win. Yes, he was the wisdom of the bunch. He allowed him to win all the marbles until he got the one. And number uh one had still had one marble. And he got up and started running around, well, walking around the place, trying to find his place that symbolizes the alleys that was similar to the alleys in the game. So he trying to get this down one last marble, okay? <laughs> to get to the next elevation. It, it be like that, like, you know, you just got one thing left to do, Okay. <laughs> You know, you just got this one little thing, even if it's just one little small cut in the tie, or one little thing of letting go, or one little thing you just got to change about yourself, or whatever. You just have this one little thing about yourself in your journey, just to get to another elevation of you. And it can be frustrating as hell when you're trying to get the last piece. All right? Yes, it's a childhood game base. Dealing with your inner child. Dealing with the inner inner source, the inner child. That's how the child plays. We create in our imagination. We're a part of the imagination. We create our own imagination. All right? So, he finally get close to the old man. And the old man just kind of just, he just, he was frustrated as hell. He was just like, man, just, just pick it. Say it already. Give me my last piece to the puzzle. Okay? My last marble. All right? So it's self, sacrifice, self. Just to give him that mount, they gave him the marble, which is a self sacrificing self to move ahead. See, sometimes you got to sacrifice yourself just to get ahead, and it's nothing wrong with it. It can be frustrating as hell because it's so much easier to sacrifice somebody else. But when it's time for you to face your reflections and you have to self-sacrifice, ooh, a lot of people give up right there. And it'll be the last little, it'll be the last piece you need. A lot of people will give up. Say, fuck it. All right? We'll say, fuck it. But then you got these people who 
You know, they like us. Peace, peace, fam. They like us. You know that we willing to put in the work. We willing to go farther than what we going. We willing to make this change. We live willing to make our heaven here on earth. Okay. To elevate, you got to change. All right. And sometimes you got to sell, and, 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 and you have to self-sacrifice. Shit, even if it's you pulling back from certain things or certain people. Self-sacrifice to gain your own peace. All right? So, yeah. Self-sacrifice self. Gave him the last marble and told him once again, we still are both champions regardless. <laughs> okay. Because we worked this one. All right. We worked this one and the knowledge that I still have, we still work as one. We balanced each other out. Okay? Self-connection to yourself. And, and that's self-sacrificing, you know, to get ahead. Then we get to episode seven. It's called the VIPs. It's dealing with, you know, in the chess games, they have the major players, the major pieces, all right? You know, your kings, your queens, the bishop, all right, which is basically your your guy energy, your oneness, your, your first eye. But the VIPs are the elite or the consciousness of those who know how to game play, those who know how to manipulate, all right, are those who know how to create. They have mastered the game to a level of wisdom, a knowledge where they know how to play the game to get what they want. Yes, they were so free with they self, the so-called elite, yes. Free with they self. The ones that we say are the filthy rich, they just spend their money on anything. That be the ones symbolically, uh, you create your, you, you have control of creating your own reality. That's the abundancy of that. All right, yep, they took it all as a joke because they knowing life wasn't real. They know how this works. They know how this game you know, it regenerates itself. They know how this game works. They know how to move and maneuver in the game. Okay? You got your master chess players out here. All right? And on this game, in this game, it's the... uh. They basically is playing like a chest across the glass bridge. Which is, you know, on a chess game, you got to get from one side to the other side. Without getting knocked off. All right. No matter if you're a pun. All right. No matter if you're the ones behind the puns. You still have to get to the other side without getting knocked off. And that's your energy being distracted. Okay. At a standstill. <laughs> Caught up in a loop or something. Some type of karmatic. Karmic. I'm sorry.
All right, bro. Love you. All right, so. And one wrong move, like as in chest, as itself, on trying to get to the other side, which is to your higher consciousness, to gain balance, right? To your next elevation. It can, it can eliminate you. An elimination doesn't have to be a transition. It can be just a standstill. It can be just a, a you're a distraction, you know, distracted. Um, you can be depressed, which is suppressing your energy. Um, you can be, you know, just caught up in a loop of other people attachments, uh, projections, uh, the illusions. The Matrix. You could just be caught up in anything. Yeah, it's like being cut off from yourself. Exactly. I got to get me another. Yeah. But um, I'm feeling this, ain't it? Alright. And the ones, oh, okay, okay. I wonder why I put that here. Cause that goes back to these so called elite people, is they they uh which they call themselves. Okay. The ones that's in the dark or basically within themselves, they tapped in, okay, they could they self connect, okay? It's to control they are controlling the light. Meaning they're controlling their own light. They're controlling their own reflections. They're controlling their own illusions. You know, they're con controlling their own reality. Their formation. Creation. Okay? They're controlling all aspects of their, um, of their journey. Alright? And that's what we're, we're getting to and what we're in. We are becoming, we are in control of our lights. Not becoming, we are in control of our light. Okay? Because like I've said before, in a lighthouse, you still have someone controlling the light of direction. All right? Or the direction of light. All right? Trying to get self to self. Self versus self. All right? And that's why the false elites created the illusion of darkness as being uh, bad or scary or evil or demonic. Which all those words still means light. <laughs> the barrier of light. Alright? Which is the creation of those who live. Because the devil is lived backwards. So those who are actually having a reality... Or an experience of those who are lived. Those who um, carry. Those who carry the light. Your reflections. And we came to uh, elevation of controlling our own direction. Our own light. Alright. That's why the elite. Uh, the go, You know. These so, these higher ups or, you know, the ones that's, you know, the founding fathers or such and such, you know, are losing control of energy. Because energy is getting back to the source of thing, which is the regeneration, which is the reset, which is the new shift, which is the new you, your new way of thinking, you know, the energy. All right. And your higher self is beyond the light. Remember, the light is your crown. And the crown of light crowns darkness. All right. All right, so... I'm going to do that. This is another one. I don't know why. I, I wrote something past that. Now, we on number eight. We got one more to go after this, y'all. 
episode eight is called the front man right and at this time, after everybody crossing that bridge, honey, it was so many sacrifices taking place. You know, a lot of people could not get to the other side because a lot of people can't get to, you know, behind the light to have control. Okay. Which is gaining balance. A lot of people can't get there. A lot of people be distracted to get into the sort to begin to get to the source of things, the beginning of self, the connection with yourself, to have a balanced experience. Because now you know who you are, and you be control you um become control of your own energy, your own destiny. So you getting closer. To your front man. Okay. And in this part of the game. There is three players left. Only three cross that bridge. There's only three players left. And only three players cross that bridge. Right. Three symbolizing then. Your triple God self, the Holy Trinity, the Christ energy, and the Christ energy deals with your crown. All right, that's what your Christ energy is. All right. Oneness. Okay, you just. One more step to get into oneness. Okay? Because this is game, uh, I think number five, that's how they play it, because there's only six games in this whole season. But it's like nine episodes. So they're on game five at this point in the, the series. But we're on episode eight, all right? But it's called Front Man. Like I said, it's symbolized. It's got three players left. And when they go, you know, from finishing this game, it's like they don't level up. Okay? They stepping into the Christ energy of things now. Okay? They get to have this bath, the clean up after the clean, which is cleansing. After all the sacrifices that just take place. You know, they got to wash all of that off them. Off their energy. Shed that away from what don't mean you no more purpose anymore. Okay? Your Corona, okay? <laughs> yes, exactly, sis. That's why images Jesus' head always have that halo of light around it. Yes, as I say, you stepping into the kingdom of God now, okay? You stepping into that Christ energy. Okay, that crown. All right. And before they get into that crown, they had to go through, they had to go through the, all the sacrifices. All right. Now they finna go through a major cleansing. They taking a shower. They rinsing off all the blood, the splatter. Okay. All that to get where they are getting, where they at now. All right? So when they get out there, they get dressed up. Okay, they got on black and white. <laughs> woo -hoo! They got on black and white, okay? And we know that black and white is that yin and that yang, okay? Your balance, your left, your right, your masculine, your feminine, okay? Yo negative, yo positive, okay? Yo above, yo below. <laughs> All right. So they balance now. Steak dinner, yes, a little bit of wine. 
Y'all got me tripping. Let me get me, y'all, let me get me a bill right quick. Hold up. But yes, honey. They eating good now. That's like the last meal, okay? <laughs> you get what you want, okay? Before you go to this next chapter, let me go on and celebrate. Okay? Honey, let me go on and celebrate. Shit, I might cook some steak tomorrow while you're fucking with me. Okay? But yes, honey, so. You know, they enjoying their little meal, you know. They know they, they, they got one more game left, which is one more piece left. One more marble, you know. One more to truly win this game. All right? One more step that they got to go through. So, when they get in there, the table is in the shape of a triangle. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. A triangle. Yes, one more level, one more phase. <laughs> the table is in the shape of a triangle. Okay, there it is, representing your holy trinity, your Christ energy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, they had to leap. They had to leap. They had to leap into that next elevation. They sure hell did. And they gained some cuts when they leaped. From all the back shatter of the fucking glass, which is a symbolism of the reflections. Okay? Them little reflections left some scars. One that was almost deadly. What well, was deadly? Okay. So they, like I said, they in they black and white. The the, the floor is what chessboard. Okay. Also about that leap, they had to leap, they had to leap into faith. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just got to leap into faith. You just got to let go and you just got to just jump in. You got to leap in, okay? Drop the self-doubt, the fear, and just go. I know, sis. I know. I'm telling you, I can relate big time to this shit. Like, this is a part of every experience that we endure, you know, we we go through here in our um in this journey. These are very valuable lessons or knowledge or wisdom as they gave us in the squid game. Because we go through all through all all of these aspects of our journey when we're trying to get to the next level. All right. I already broke down their numbers. Now, this cop, he ended up escaping. He found out what he needed in the foundation. And he tried to run from the foundation with the truth instead of facing the reflection. All right. Yes. I know we all have ran with the truth, meaning we got the truth, but we won't face that reflection. Just them skeletons in the closet. Them what well, I'm going to take to the grave. <laughs> okay. Those hidden truths. Try to run from them. Okay. Running from your truths. Got the truth, 
but you're running from the reflection. All right. So he finally faced that reflection and found his brother. And his brother was the source of this game. You know, he was a part of the game. Okay. He was a part of it. He controlled it. You know, and he end up self -sacri being sacrificed. That's what happens when you got the truth about you or about anybody, period. You know, but you won't face the reflection. You see your truth, but you don't want to face your reflection. Which is going to cause you to sacrifice yourself in the end. Alright. And self-sacrifice can mean ending it all. Being forever stuck. Uh, dipping out this motherfucking experience and coming back and trying it again. Have you ever just played a game like Mario's and you know you ain't got number one goddamn man left, right? So you trying to get through all these levels with this one man without, you know, without losing it, you know what I'm saying? So you trying to get through these levels without losing the game with just with one man, okay? <laughs> and then eventually, you got to lose. Just to start over again. Alright? Alright? Like I said, you have to lose to win. It's alright to lose. You're not going to get everything at one time. You're not going to get everything this experience. You're not going to get everything at, at that moment. Alright? And it's alright to lose. Just so you can elevate and win. Alright? Now, when they sitting at this table, I seen the unique, you know, how, how unique it was that the girl was sitting at the bottom of the table. You know, the flat surface of the triangle it's the divine feminine energy part of the foundation the foundation of the triangle alright and then you got the two masculine where well you got a masculine energy on this side which I see 218 as being the masculine energy okay and I see <laughs> Well, the girl, not divine feminine, but the girl is a divine energy. That's the foundation. I see 218 as the masculine energy, and I see 456 as the feminine energy because he's so nurturing. He's so compassionate. Okay? That's that feminine energy. Fight when we got to. Okay? I'm a lover, not a fighter. That's that feminine energy. The masculine energy is the fighter. Yes. I can see that too, sis. I can see that too. A lot of us feminine, you know, energy, period. A lot of the feminine energy, period. But you got, you know, we got something that's just too masculine. But that's just what they connect mostly with. But, you know, I see that 
because I see the divine fem the divine mass I mean damn the divine energy at the bottom which is the girl you know what I'm saying they say divine energy is the mother of all that's the creator okay but divine energy is oneness that's masculine and feminine neither or before e uh, I mean before each other Um, isn't it in the Bible? I need I need somebody to look this up. I need to make sure I need heaven and earth at the same time. Is that right? I can't look at my Bible's in the back, y'all. Y'all gonna have to help me out with this verse right here now. I don't read the Bible, but I can read it and break that shit down now. And if uh, energy lead me to it, I'm gonna read it. I think my video is lagging, though. But I think that's what it is. Either way, I see it in the chat. I think my video is lagging. But anyway, yeah. But, okay, so I seen the pyramid is that when they were sitting there. Okay. And then we got the tip of the pyramid as the projection of um of creation. I meant to have print this out, but I guess I'll print it out next time to show you how this energy works from the foundation and goes out, you know, as one projection, oneness, okay? Dealing with your light and the darkness, which is your foundation. I just said that um now in the middle of the table is a candle holder and it, it it um and after they finish in um eating it's right there in the middle of the chest floor where there's you know where they're housed at where they sleep at and stuff like that. Um it has five candles on it, which is symbolizing love also. That's also balance your your nurturing, okay? The divine feminine energy. Divine energy. Okay. New life, a change, elevation about to come. Your peace, your clarity, your prosperity, your abundance. I mean, abundance. Because I said one is in balance. Okay. Now, episode nine is one lucky day. This is the last episode. And if you're at this part of the game, which is not episode nine, but which is number six in the game, which is the last level of the game to win. Because when we know when we get to seven, symbolically, you are reaching, you are in your uh, oneness. That means you don't went through each level of your chakras. And your seven one is your crown energy, which is your holy trinity. Your Christ energy. So now you're being able to get, you're being able to connect with that source. So you can have control of your own creative. Um, your own creations, your own destiny, your own manifestations, your own images, I mean, uh, reflections, creations, I just said that, so. Creator of your own new world. All right? Create, I mean, control of self. And control of self is connected with all, all energy. All right. So episode nine is called One Lucky Day. In this game right here, four, five, six had to, he had to go against number 218. 
which is that 10, which is getting into that new beginning. All right. Ending, heading to a new beginning, that oneness. All right. Becoming Neo. All right. So he had to go against him in a, a childhood game that they already was familiar with. And as he was a kid, when he was a kid at the beginning, they shows that four, five, six beats. I think it was four, five, six. No. It might have been four, five, six. I can't remember, y'all. But I think it was four, five, six beat number 218 when they was kids at this game. And he was known to be a good gamer. Like, he, he can play all the games real good, you know. They thought highly of him in the community. <clears throat> he was a, a good sports, you know, player. He was He went to college. All right. But he wasn't whole inside. <laughs> he wasn't complete. He didn't have self-connection. He wasn't one with no with himself. His mama thought so highly of him. She would ask 456 every day how she talked to him. Yes, the general. You know? Because she hadn't talked to her son. But see, her son was embarrassed. He was afraid to face his reflection. Since his mama is a part of his reflection. It was hard for him to face her. To tell her the truth. Hell, to even be honest with himself. But 456 knew, you know, through it all, why are you here? If you such a big shot in our home, in our community, and you the one of the one of the ones who went to college and made it up out of the hoods, right? Why are you here in debt with yourself? You supposed to have all this money, okay? Living this lavish life. Why are you here? Why are you here? Why are you at the bottom, as they would say, when you were so much at the top? Why are you here? And see, that's a reflection he had to face. Because he was so thought of, so highly thought of. And he put on an image that he was one of the ones who made it out of the hood. Who made it out of uh, sovereignty. I mean, poverty, y'all. Not sovereignty. <laughs> Excuse me. Alright. And that's just one reflection. He just didn't want to face. He put up a good fight against 456. Because he had high hopes <laughs> of winning. Because he had don't cheat it. Just like he cheated in his life to get out of the, the hood. The poverty. To be able to disguise as this big shot. They in a squid game. As we all are. We can disguise ourselves to be who we want to be. But the only real connection of that is knowing who you are.
You can be who you want to be and don't know who you are and be caught up in the hype of shit. And then you wonder why you, you don't feel like you loved. <laughs> All right. Because we, we're not connecting with self. You're not willing to sacrifice and face that reflection. Letting go of not, those things that don't mean you no good, which is even that image. Okay? That the sky's letting that shit go. You can get another disguise. Let the old one go. Alright. But like I said, he put up a good fight. He put up a damn good fight, honey. That strength was everything, you know. Yes. Okay. Exactly, or <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He put up a good damn fight. He did not want to face that reflection. You know? And 456, you know, finally got him. Because as much strength in him trying to be strong, as a lot of people try to be strong, but you're not happy inside. You're putting on a disguise to be strong. But you not full inside, you not happy, you not healed. Okay? So that, that strength starts to break down. You become weak. Your self-doubt that you've already had there that you tried to hide behind the disguise of being strong or being this hot shot kicks in. That reflection. Okay? And that reflection is breaking you down. Down to a level of face and self. Okay? And he goes for the win. Four, five, six. Now... 218 could have got back up. But he realized that fight was a tough one. He had got him. The ref reflection, he was starting to face it. What 456 said to him really started to hit him. He was starting to see his true self. But four, five, six, wanting both of them to walk out of there together. And sometimes that's what we want. <laughs> we be wanting people to walk through certain levels with us together. But you got to let people be where they're going to be. You got to let them go. All right. Right. He knew it was the end of him, but 456 was still trying to take him with him. See, that's that dead weight, too. When people know what they done, and they know they can't move where you trying to go, you can't have self-sympathy. You can't give them a benefit of the doubt because they, they become dead weight. Yes, they drag us down. Slow us down. And 218 knew what he was trying to do. He know that's the nurturing in him. The compassion for all. And a lot of us, we want to just, we want everybody to go with us. That's the oneness. That's the nurturing energy, the divine 
feminine energy in you, okay? That divine feminine energy in you. Alright? That's the choice. Yes, they have a choice. And that's the choice you got to make. And a lot of people been already made their choice. They say they ain't going to change. You just going to have to fucking deal with me or what? And if you don't want to, you know where to go. That's your self telling you. I'm not ready to change. This is my, this is my reflection. It's higher reflections than this right here. Right, we can't let that compassion outweigh logic in the, the evenness. You can't. Sometimes compassion is, is just letting go. You still be in compassion with yourself. So 218 knew he was trying to, but he wasn't going to allow. And it's yourself not going to allow you to carry that dead weight anymore. All right? So he sacrificed himself. You self-sacrificing yourself to move forward. And that means letting go of everything. Facing your reflections from here on out and even those who come about this old. All right. Self leading thyself. Yes. All right. So, by that self-sacrifice, that allows you to win. Because, see, these sacrifices that took place, it was easier for other people to be sac sacrificed. You know? But when it comes to you and those reflections and dealing with yourself, that's the hardest sacrifice you got to make. But it's also the strongest. Because it takes you to another place, another elevation in you, a change in you. It helps your heart become light as a feather. Alright, or your energy being balanced is one. He win the game. And this his account number, y'all. Y'all know I was all in if I got the account number. Okay. No, your girl was all in. Okay. So the account number, his account number that has all his winnings. Okay. All the numbers. It was 33 right? So I add all of them up. And I got the number five. Ooh. Now we go to this love frequency, the self-love. Okay? That real love connection. Okay? That new heart. Ooh. All right? That new change in you. Your walk, your step. The way you speak, the way you think, your projection, okay? All dealing with your love frequency, that number five. New beginnings. All right? Balance. All right? And he in, in his... 
it's only perfect that they gave that number because this character did everything out of his heart. Everything. That's the best way to be when you're trying to beat these levels. When you gain the lessons and you do it out of your heart. You don't take nothing for granted. Well, you know, you don't take nothing uh, serious or for granted. Okay, change the experience is all about change. Accepting it to experience it again. Yes, love. Yes, Yanni. Okay. Everybody wants love. That's how you gain it. And in the words of RuPaul, if you can't love yourself, how can you love anybody else? <laughs> okay. And... Oh, boy, this little girl scribble, scrabble all on my word. In the midst of, you know, his account. Hold up. I, I'm missing something. I got your account number. The little freak. Oh, his money. And after he took the 10000 out, it ended up to five, which was love frequency again, okay? And dealing with that six, you know, that's that's dealing with, your, also, your new beginnings, um, a new elevation, um, your consciousness, your vision, um, peace, prosperity, okay? Wisdom and knowledge as well. Yes, it was his heart that helped him win. Yes, his illusions kept breaking. That disguise that he was trying to put on, that old man was trying to put on, kept breaking. And he knew that that old man at that moment was trying to play him, okay? He knew that. After a while of trying to beat him, he realized this motherfucker playing me. Okay? That's that childlike energy. That's that Christ energy. <laughs> okay? Um, oh, yeah, let me go back. And around that time, after, you know, winning, um, and, you know, gaining his money and stuff like that, he found out that the old man was the creator of the game, you know, such as the Matrix, the creator of the Matrix, the creator of the game, you know, creator of the illusion, the experience, the light, Okay. And it was something about when he found out, okay, this little part stuck out to me when he found out who the old man was, you know. And, you know, the old man was telling him about, self, you know, sacrificing, you know, to get ahead in, in your journey. Um, and sometimes sacrifices, well, sacrifices have to take place, you know. And it's really not that serious. It's all a game, okay? Life is nothing but a game. Um, life is nothing but a dream. Your dream is what you manifest, what you create, your visions, okay? What you're going to project out, how you're going to move, even if you're connected with inner, um, inner energies inside of you, okay? Such as seeing past reflections of the experience, you know? But he was talking to him and telling him, you know, did he believe it was still good people in the world, which is in the experience? Because it was a man that was sitting outside the hospital that was drunk, stuck in debt of self, okay? Where four, five, six used to be in his journey. And... He was like, I'm gonna give you to 12 o'clock. You know, if he if he gets help, I give you all the information you want to give, you whatever you want to know. And if he lose, pretty much, um, he wasn't gonna tell him nothing. He was just gonna transition. <laughs> 
So in the midst of here waiting on somebody to save the white man, well, the man that was out there, you know, sitting in front of the building drunk, you know, he was starting to become frozen and he was, you know, he had ice on him and somebody walked by him and, and tried to, you know, wake him up, but he didn't move. So that person, you know, just at the break of that moment, four, five, six was starting to have doubt like, damn, there's really no good people in the world, you know? Like, it's really all based off your own faith, you know, or how you move in your journey. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's got a hidden agenda, which is a disguise, you know? So, just at that point where he was just like, you know, it's, it's really no love. No connection. Um, no oneness. The aunt, uh, a cop pulls up with the person that was trying to wake the person up and end up saving the man. The old man knew that somebody was going to save him because he knew that 456 had that love frequency in him, that hope, you know. That hope, that faith, that knowing, that oneness about him. Because at one point, he was about to go down there and save the man. But he told him, you know, from the beginning, you can't. If you want to know what I, if you want to know what it really is, you want to know the knowledge or the information. All right. So he had to wait. And he had to sit there and watch. Okay. Okay. But it was still, he still ended up, the man ended up still getting help. You know, which showed to him that I, you know, self was right. It's still people out there like me. It's people that's been where I've been. And it's still people out there where I'm at now that's willing to help. Okay? Not everybody is just so disconnected. Does it take everybody to be connected and no experience? It all deals with the energy. Right, all his money not to go get help. Which is another sacrifice. Because if we gain, we gain abundance, which is through your wealth. It has nothing to, I mean, you know, not with the, through your wealth, but through your health, which is your energy, which is dealing with the body, the source of you, right? So you got all this abundancy now. It's limitless. And you are at a crossroads sometimes and just want to throw it all away because you want to help somebody else. Okay? And that's normal. That's the nurturing energy in you. You know, but sometimes that might not be your lesson or your task, okay? And there's other beings out here that is on the same frequency as you that would do the same thing, which is a reflection of you as well, okay? So he projected out this help. Projected out the energy of this man getting help. Which is the energy. Which proved to him, oh yes, God does exist. Which is the oneness in you. Which is what you believe, what you, your faith, your hope. Alright? Your love, which is the connection to all. And that man got help. And the old man knew he was going to get help because he knew the energy that he, that uh, that four, five, six, four, five, six carried. And that was that's a rare energy. Because a lot of people are so caught up. They like little gems of life. 
in your journey. Your spirit guide. All right, to help you get through or you helping someone else to get through either way, okay? But the old man knew and he had already said what he was going to say to him. He just wanted him to stay there to listen to self. Sometimes you just got to be in a standstill to listen to self. All right? You can project that energy out to other people to, you know, speak prosperity and love in them, but you still have to stay firm with self, okay? Listen to self. And his self was giving him the knowledge, the truth, which is the knowledge, all right? About the game, about his the experience. About the self-sacrificing and the sacrifices. Yes, he wanted him to catch it. Because he missed it along the way because of his, his, his nurture, his compassion. Like I said, it's alright to be compassionate towards others. But you got to be compassionate with self to gain the lesson. All right. So he had already told him pretty much what he wanted to hear the whole time they waiting until this man get, you know, till the man got help. At 12 o'clock, which is a symbolism of three together, which is your Christ energy elevation, baby, your crown. His higher self transcended, ascended. Okay. Let there be light. Yes. Your light going off. Yes. All right. Control over your destiny. Yourself. Journey. All right. So after, you know, that the old man transition, he leaves, you know. And at this point, he's on his way to go see his daughter. But before he goes see his daughter, he, he dyed his hair red. <laughs> he got the haircut of the girl that was number 67 that was in the game because he ended up getting her brother and placing, her, placing him with the old lady and giving her money that he owed his son. I mean, owed her son. And, to, you know, to take care of the little boy. Even though that girl stole from him and everything, he still was able to help her here in elevation by getting her brother and placing him in a, a, a proper homie full of love, caring, attention, a mother's love, which was Number 218's mother, who was crying out to her son, but he was running from himself and running from his mother, which is his reflection of his foundation. Even though the old him transcended, she gained him by that little boy. She got a second chance. No, she would never forget her reflection of her son, but this gives her a second chance at life with his energy, with the energy period and experience. She lost the old son and gained the new one. All right. And he ended up, you know, like I said, dying his hair red. Same cut as the girl, number 67, same haircut though. But the red, because it symbolizes your foundation again, your roots. 
Even though he was clean cut, he was he had a new walk now. New clothes. Okay. Just like number 218. New walk, new clothes, a new life. But he still had some shit in his foundation. And 218 wasn't ready to face that shit. But number 456. On his way to go visit his daughter, he had to trip go on back. Because he wasn't he wasn't satisfied. He wasn't quite uh he didn't quite have an understanding. He wanted more truth. Because now he know what the game is. You know, he want to know how deep do the game go. No, he wasn't a drunk getting beat up no more. <laughs> wasn't. Okay. He also, you know, also he lost his mother too. He came home to his, his mother transition. And that was the same thing is just with 218 mother. She transitioned with trying to be in connection with her old son, which was the drunk. So she didn't get the connect to the new him which is the new elevation of him and the experience alright which was also a sacrifice as well because mom was very sick and he was trying everything in his might to get the money to help her get better But mom was ready to go. She had on gave up a long time ago. And she wanted him to, to, to live his life without her um her over motherly skills, meaning she was mothering him. She took care of him. You know, she gave him money. She was his uh not just his backbone, but she was uh, his enabler of him stuff that was stopping him from also from being a man or elevating in his journey. You know, walking on his own self journey. Okay. But yeah. So instead of him going to see his daughter as he was getting on the plane to go do to take flight. All right. He realized, you know, that he needed to know more about the game. All right. So he sacrificed going to connect with his daughter, see his daughter, to gain knowledge more about the game. And we do that a lot when it comes to our family. All right. We will sacrifice that connection. All right. Just to gain knowledge and more experience of the game. Yeah, he jumped back into that game. So you know it's going to be a part two. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know it's going to be a part two. But yeah, y'all, that was a good ass season. If y'all have not watched it, I already done spilled the tea. And but at least, you know, if you see it, you you know, you'll be able to catch some of the things I caught, you know, or even more that I didn't catch. But yeah, y'all. The squid game is the matrix game. <laughs> the devil's playground. 
okay? The experience of it all. Okay? But I'm going to get up out of here, y'all. Because... Girl, me neither. I could not. I watched all the seasons. I watched up to eight, no, seven seasons in one day. And then in a couple of days later, I just finished the two, the last two. It was that good, man. Once you get on it, you, you can't stop watching it. So I can't wait to the next season. Definitely can't wait. But yeah, y'all, I'm going to get up out of here, y'all. And I will talk to y'all a little later. And see y'all next Friday and next Sunday. All right. Love, peace, and oneness.